Hey and welcome or welcome back to the books are everywhere. Today I am here with the mid-year freak out tag even though we might be a bit late for this now. I don't know, we're getting towards the end of July so we're probably a bit late <laughs> but we are over halfway through the year. Anyone else feel like we're at the end of the year? I don't know, it's weird. I feel like I've started thinking about Christmas but anyway that's beside the point. <laughs> this is a tag that I am sure you have seen a lot of. Um, it comes out every year around this time of year, obviously midway through the year and everyone's been doing it and I wanted to join in. Um, this tag, as far as I'm aware, was originally created by two YouTubers in 2012 um, and I will link them below if their channels are still active. Um, I think that's the origin but I felt like this has gone so far beyond that everybody does it now um, and no one really knows like where it's came from the questions have kind of changed a bit um, and I feel like everyone does a little bit of a different iteration I have no idea whether I have the correct questions but these are the questions that I've seen other people using on booktube so I'm going to go through those the first question is your favorite or the best book you have read so far this year this one I didn't know the answer until I started actually researching it for this question. I obviously had an idea of like some of my favourite books of the year and ones that have stuck in my head, um, but I hadn't actually sat down and thought about it. But it's kind of unsurprising that it's The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. I think this is probably the book that has left the most mark on me this year. Um, it was a five star read. I really have not had many five star reads this year, probably less than 10. So there wasn't that much to choose from when I actually filtered out the rest. Um, but this book is definitely one that will probably make the biggest impact on me, uh, I would think, beyond this year. So it wouldn't surprise me if this does stay my favourite book of 2024. Um, this one is one that I borrowed. A lot of books on here I maybe don't have or um, I borrowed them so I will put like photos of the covers. Um, this one is Ian Banks' first book, I think. I think it was his first, his debut. Um, it was published in 1984 and it's following a 16 year old boy called Frank. So it's a weird one in terms of like I would definitely not call it young adult. <laughs> but it is based, it's, the main character is a teenager, but it's following Frank who is no ordinary 16 year old. He is in, he lives in a remote Scottish village. His older brother is confined to a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital um, and he's, his mom abandoned them years ago. So it's just him and his dad in this house in this remote Scottish village. And he turns to acts of violence to vent out his frustration. And this is basically following him as he does some really messed up stuff. And it is really bizarre and it's really weird to read and it will stay with you. And I also think this is probably the book I have had the most questions about after reading it. Like the most people approach me and go, what did you think of the wasp factory or like oh i saw you read the wasp factory i don't think i've ever had that many people people at work friends like say to me oh you read the wasp that like, you read this book what did you think i feel like it's one of those that just has such an impact on somebody if they read it and i can really see why <laughs> when i finished this book i literally just I, I probably physically I gasped which I feel like is very rare and then I just sat there being like what the hell just happened what did I just read honestly this book is it's it's so strange it's quite incredible um and I see why it has come out as my top book of the year so far next is the best sequel and I also had no idea what I was going to pick for this until I started looking at it I also felt like I hadn't really read any sequels but it turns out I have read quite a lot of sequels or series or continued with series a few of them being graphic like a lot of them being graphic novels so it comes as no surprise that this is a graphic novel this is Delicate the sequel to Sheets the graphic novel by Brenna Thumbler I have read the second, this is the second one, so I read Delicate and I also read Lights, the third one this year. I read this right at the start of the year, so it didn't necessarily jump out at me. Um, me and Courtney have buddy read this entire trilogy when we've been on reading retreats in the past year or so. 
and I absolutely loved this so much. I really liked Sheets but I feel like Delicates actually impressed me more than Sheets did um, and I loved Lights as well so much but this series follows a 13 year old or 12 year old called Marjorie Glatt. Her mother passes away I think before the start of the first book so you never see her. She's left to look after the family's laundromat while her father is grieving so her family's around, her father's around but everyone's really struggling through this period of grief. Um, so she's kind of left to look after the laundromat and she's doing that and it's a lot about kind of her responsibility and obviously coming to terms with the loss of her mother but also becoming friends with this sheet ghost called Wendell who lives in the laundromat as well um, and it's just so cute, it's so lovely, it's so heartwarming, there's so much in here about friendship, growing up, family, obviously grief so many deep topics explored um, in a graphic novel. I feel like that's really hard to do. These aren't thin graphic novels but still feel like it's such a difficult thing to do in a graphic novel and as you can see just flicking through it these are absolutely gorgeous. I love them so much and the some of the like double page, page spreads in here, the use of colour like this one especially actually made me it was part of the reason why I started getting back into photography and I bought myself another film camera because um, as well as like speaking to people about photography um, for the first time in a while but this one has a new character called Eliza and she loves the dark room and developing her own film and it just made me remember how much I love doing that too. It's been a long time since I developed my own film but I would love to do it again sometime and I just feel like this depicted what I love about developing and the dark room so well um, and I love that they use the red light so well in this book. The use of colour is beautiful. This was a five star. This is the best sequel I have read so far this year and Lights by the same author, book three in this graphic novel series. The next one is a new release you haven't read yet but want to, so a book that has already come out and you haven't read it yet. I took that as the the question um, and the book I've picked is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. Might be cheating a little bit just because this came to mind because me and Alex are going to start body reading it this week because we both kind of said that if we don't do it now we'll never do it and I hate to say that most of the reason why I want to read this is to get it done with. I love Sarah J Maas, I love Akatar, I love Throne of Glass, I enjoyed House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath this is definitely my least favourite series by her I and I don't find it very compelling in comparison to the others. When A Court of Silver Flames came out I was so intimidated by it and then I started reading it and I was like I love this world, I love these characters, I just wanted to carry on reading it and I read most of it in a day and it's like about as chunky as this. This is so long. <laughs> Let's see how many pages that actually is. Oh it's got some kind of bonus thing in the back. It's over, it's just over 800 pages. Me and Alex are going to read it over two weeks because it's chunky. This doesn't appeal to me so much because it's, this series is a contemporary fantasy and I prefer historical and like medieval fantasy. I could never really get my head around the fact that they just watch TV or use phones in the fantasy. It just baffles me and it's not where I, it's not what I think of when I think of like where I want my brain to be or what I'm picturing with fantasy so I think that's part of the reason why this series doesn't appeal to me as much but if you don't know what the House of Earth and Blood Crescent City series is about it's following Bryce who is kind of a party girl and then one night a demon murders her closest friends um, especially like one of her very close friends who I've forgotten the name of <laughs> but I'm sure will come back to me um, and she ends up at the heart of the investigation, she wants to avenge their deaths and then she has this fallen angel called Hunt who is like sent to like watch over Bryce and obviously things happen. There's kind of like a mystery obviously where they're trying to like find out what happened to her friends that were murdered. Um, there's a lot more to it, a lot more that I don't remember. <laughs> So we'll see how going into the third one is. I was really excited about this because of the ending of House of Sky and Breath that really intrigued me so I was so excited for this to come out and to be able to start reading it but 
I've heard so many disappointing things about this since it actually came out that I feel like now I'm like, do I have to? <laughs> um, but I still want to read it, I still want to find out for myself whether I'm going to enjoy this. It's got a very pretty cover and I love that this is foiled, this Crescent City. Crescent City? Crescent Moon. <laughs> the series is called Crescent City. Um, so yeah, we'll see how I find this, but yeah, I'm going to buddy read this with Alex over the next few weeks and finally read it. The next question is what's your most anticipated release for the rest of the year, the second half of the year? I was torn between a few, but Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune is up there. And this arrived in the post yesterday. Thank you so much to, I think it was Pam Mack that sent this to me. Thank you so much to Pam Mack for sending this my way. I am so excited. Yeah, this is a Pam Mack book. Um, this is a sequel to The House in the Cerulean Sea, which was never meant to have a sequel. And that was my favourite book of the year I read it, which I think was 2020. I think I read it in the year it came out and I absolutely loved it. It's following, the first book is following Linus Baker, who is, they, they're living in this kind of magical world that is very much like, I think, the UK, or at least I imagine it in the UK, but that might just be because I live here. Um, and he lives in this tiny house with his cat on his own. He's got a solitary, quiet life, and he works for the department in charge of magical youth. So in this world, it's very much like real life, but he oversees the well-being of these um, orphans, his children, who are magical. <laughs> they have magical powers and they are sent to orphanages and he's sent to this one orphanage on this island where these particularly dangerous magical youths go, um, these magical children go, um, and he has to go and stay there and basically make sure that the children are in good care things like that and then he meets Arthur who is their caretaker and he wants to do anything to keep his children safe. Linus is coming from this in like a very cynical way. Arthur's this like cinnamon roll of a man <laughs> and it's just it's the sweetest story. I really love it. I really love how you see this kind of redemption arc. I love the atmosphere and I'm really excited to get back into this world. I I've only read a couple of TJ Klune books, although I would think of him as like one of my favourite authors. I still haven't read a lot of his other books, but I've read House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door and I've loved them both so much. So I'm very excited to read more by him and also to get back into this world and see what's happened after the events of the House in the Cerulean Sea. And I was just absolutely very excited when this arrived at my door yesterday so thank you again to Pam Mack for sending this my way I will be reading it hopefully very shortly. The next question is your biggest disappointment I feel like there was a few that I could include in this in terms of books I expected more from and I didn't really get what I wanted from them like A Tempest of Tea came to mind because I feel like other people enjoyed that a lot more than I did but I had to include Tessa Bailey as the answer to this question. I chose It Happened One Summer just because it was the first book I read by her, so I had higher expectations. I listen to a lot of romance on audio. I find that's like the easiest thing for me to read on audio because I can listen to romance while I'm doing a lot of other things. It doesn't, I don't have to listen as much as I do or like pay as much attention or close attention as I do with like fantasy because it's in the real world and there's not as many high stakes or things going on so I tend to pick up romance on audio. I listened to this because I thought it's summer I want something summery and I want something that will make me like give me those vibes and I really didn't like this so I guess I had high expectations for this and then when I read her other I listened to her other two well two of her other books which were unfortunately yours and Fangirl Down my expectations had already dropped so I wasn't a big fan of any of her books that I read, but this one was the first one, so I had the highest expectation for it. This one is following Piper, who is like an influencer. She's like very fashion conscious. Um, that's kind of what she does and what she posts about on social media. She's a wild child. She's got this bad reputation and they live in LA, I think, somewhere like that. And she has this big party, things go wrong, the police get involved and her stepfather who kind of like controls her finances and stuff um, 
decides that enough is enough and sends her off to this rem not remote but this like seaside town where her dad had this bar and basically says you can go and work there and like learn the true meaning of life or whatever <laughs> away from money and fame and and um partying her sister joins her they go to this like coastal town they go to this bar they're like slumming it in this like flat above the bar and then enters uh whatever he was called brendan i don't even remember him being called brendan the gruff fisherman he's like the grumpy guy it's very like grumpy sunshine trope um and things happen and i just i feel like you can tell with the way i'm talking about this that i'm exasperated <laughs> and i started listening to unfortunately yours and i feel like most of tessa bailey's books just have this theme of like there is this girl who has a lot of money or comes from like a rich background and she has this like not redemption arc but you learn throughout the book or you're meant to learn that she's not just this spoiled little rich kid and then there's this grumpy guy who so this one is like the fisherman thing and then the other one i read was like wine in like vineyards and stuff and then fangirl down is like golf related I feel like there's just really random <laughs> themes and then there's this like grumpy sunshine romance and i just didn't like it and i didn't like the smart i couldn't get on board with the smart there's they feel very insta love to me so yeah i will stop slating this book now but um i didn't enjoy it very much i got it gave it two and a half stars and i feel like that is my biggest disappointment of the year so far my biggest surprise i feel like i have to repeat an answer here and that must it has to be the wasp factory by ian banks just because i went in that with absolutely no expectations the person that we kind of we swapped like our favorite books and we have very different tastes so i just didn't know what to expect from it but i absolutely loved it and i i wouldn't say i didn't expect to love it but i just didn't know what i was in for um and i guess it also has the biggest surprise element of it having this massive surprise in it at the end which i could never have guessed and genuinely made me gasp so i feel like it does fit this question on multiple levels so i have to include it here the other one i read um that actually surprised me is little wing by freya north i really enjoyed that too um this that one was like set across three different time periods and three different places around the uk it was like a scottish island and a maybe colchester somewhere where someone ran a cafe in essex Sussex down southeast um and London and it was these three different characters and there was this like mystery between them and it's not something I would have necessarily picked up but I again had that one lent to me I feel like that's something that I've been finding this year is like actually letting somebody else say I think you're going to enjoy this I'm just trusting them it comes it's just really interesting you get some really interesting results from that and I really like doing that so I feel like a lot of what I've read has been that like you're going to enjoy this or you I think you're going to enjoy this and they're right so <laughs> that's been really fun um so yeah there's that one and the wasp factory are probably um two of my biggest surprises of the year next is my favorite new author so this can be a new author as in they've released a debut this year or it can be an author that's new to you and I oh god I was just gonna say that my new favorite author is Ashley Poston because I've read this this year and I really loved it and I'm really excited to read more of her books but I have also just realised that I have read her books before and I just completely forgotten so that this is actually not a genuine answer. In a way it is because this I haven't read her for years I feel like she's probably become a new favourite author this year but that's not in the spirit of the question. I did also want to say Ian Banks here because I also read and loved Espadare Street right after reading the, the Wasp Factory and I do want to read more Ian Banks books in the future but I wanted to also answer something differently so I was going to answer with this one. However, <laughs> so this is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston which I listened to recently on audio and absolutely loved so much. It's everything I love about like romance but has something different about it. It has a time travel element. I love time travel like sci-fi stuff that's like based in the real world but then has this like time slip which is exactly what the seven year slip's about it made me quite emotional 
so you might see it again in this video. <laughs> But the reason why I'm including it as this question is because it's a favourite new author. And what I just remembered when I picked up this book to show it to you is that I read Geekerella years ago, which is a YA book by Ashley Poston around the like fandoms and stuff. And I loved that book when I read it, unsurprisingly. I do actually have the other two books in that series that I haven't read yet and I do really want to. But this is technically not a favourite new author to me because I read Geekerella years ago. So I'm still going to answer it because I have my hearts out on Ashley Boston and I didn't really have any other authors that really jumped out to me as the answer for this question apart from Ian Banks. So I'm still going to include it but I do feel a little bit like a cheat. <laughs> The next question is your newest fictional crush. I don't normally answer this question because I don't really get them. But I am going to answer this question. I feel like I'm answering this in terms of what's your favourite romance that you've read recently because I still don't really think of, I don't really have crushes on fictional characters at all. I don't in like films, I don't have crushes on celebrities. It's just the way I am. Um, but I'm answering this as I want to give Laura Wood a shout out and I really love this book and I really love this romance. <laughs> so I'm answering Theo Elliott from Under Your Spell. <laughs> But really I'm answering Under Your Spell by Laura Wood because I just love this book so much. Me and Courtney read this on our summer reading holiday which was a couple of videos back and we absolutely loved it. This one's following Clementine Munro who's just kind of lost everything. She's just gone through a breakup. Um, yeah, been fired from her job. She's about to lose her flat and her sisters get her drunk. Um, and then they suggest reviving a childhood ritual called the breakup spell and she doesn't see any harm in it but then she accidentally ruins a funeral <laughs> has a first one night stand and she's stuck with a new job that she really doesn't want which is spending six weeks looking after this rock star called Theo Elliot and it's great <laughs> it's so good it's so fun I love Laura was writing this is her first adult romance she predominantly writes YA historical romance which I also absolutely love and I feel like both me and Courtney were wondering how her writing was going to transfer to adult romance because her YA historical is so you feel so in the story it's one of those I I don't think I've ever read anything like Laura Wood's writing where I feel like I'm actually in the story and I think we both wondered how it would come across in an adult romance but we both still felt that compelling nature of the writing and I loved it so Under Your Spell by Laura Wood is my newest fictional crush I'll just go with that the book is my newest fictional crush next question is the newest favourite character I did think about combining these but I actually have quite an interesting answer for this question. It is the characters from this series by Melissa Harrison which is the first book is called by Ash, Oak and Thorn and this one is called by Rowan and You. The first one's set around spring I think and this one is set in like autumn. I love these books so much they are so cute. This again I have borrowed um, which is why I'm showing you the second book rather than the first book because I have the second one on me because I just finished it um, and this one is and um, it's inspired by The Little Grey Men by BB which I literally just read and I also really enjoyed I finished that this morning but this one's a kind of modern retelling of that because that book is from the 40s and I just, I really love these, <laughs> so cute. They're following these little, they're these tiny characters called the Hidden Folk, they live in nature, and there's a group of them, it's very found family. This, they're called Moss, Sorrel, Burnett and Dorma, and there's other characters as well. Um, and there's just, these books have such a good message behind them and I just love them as a found family and as a unit and also the thing that this, these books do so well which I keep wanting to talk about is they approach emotion so well for children. These characters cry all the time and it's okay. It's just they go through something upsetting and they cry. All of them cry and I love that. I just I think it's such an important message to give out to kids that it's okay to be emotional over things and it's okay to have a reaction like that to something that you're going through and I think that's why I love the characters in this book these books so much because they have such this this lovely like close-knit friendship family 
and I love that and I, they support each other so well and I think these have such important messages about nature and about those subjects these emotional subjects and they're really approachable for kids and they're also just really they have that lovely encompassing feeling that middle grade books have um and I just really enjoyed that so much and I think these are really important books and yeah there we go they're my favourite characters the hidden folk of these books are my favourite characters and talking about crying the next question is a book that made you cry I don't think I've had a book this year that's made me actually like sob and I don't really find that very often um Addie LaRue I absolutely bloody sobbed at Addie LaRue like tears running down my face but I don't think I've had one that's actually made me like cry that much this year seven year slip we mention it again made me really teary but I was driving so I couldn't really sob it anyway even if I wanted to but I did want to give a shout out to that because that one did make me really emotional the other one that I kind of expected was Hold Still by Nina LaCour. I read this when I was going through a really tough time, so I kind of expected to have an emotional reaction to it. Um, and I almost did that on purpose. Like, I read this at an emotional time in my life because it's what I wanted to read. Um, but I, I read the ending while I was at work, while I was on my lunch break. So I was kind of sat, like, around other people or with my colleagues. So... I didn't maybe cry as much as I wanted to but I did have a few tears because this is just so sad um it's following um Caitlin and her best friend Ingrid has just committed suicide so it leaves Caitlin very much as a, she's a teenager she's a teenage girl and she's without her best friend and it's basically following her she's trying to navigate this grief um, all of Neela Lacour's books are so sad and always make me emotional but I also find them really really compelling I just want to read on and I needed something that would make me love reading again and Neela Lacour's books always make me feel like that which is why I chose to read this one when I did and I really loved it so yeah hold still almost kind of made me cry <laughs> the next one is a book that made you happy and I have I hear the uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. I hear the sunspot volume I don't know because these have really confusing volume numbers <laughs> I think it's maybe five technically um but it's I Hear the Sunspot Four Seasons Volume 1 but this is like an, it is, there's so many arcs to this like manga now um but this one is following two characters Kohi and Tachi um Kohi is a college student with hearing loss and I think yes and his the start of like the first volume um he has like help from this note taker called Tarchi who is older I think maybe he's a former classmate I think he's older and it's following them as so that they're, they're like teenagers but they're upper end of like teenagers um because they're in college and it's following their budding romance this like they have a spark between them and it goes from there it's very much like Heartstopper in manga form it's really sweet but it does also have some heavy topics and I feel like this one especially is just really wholesome they are really wholesome and they make me happy to read but this one especially made me feel like that and it also has some um interesting like it, it's like them going into the world of work which I really like as well because it, as I said it's like they're they are teenagers but they're kind of like uh, the upper end they're in college and stuff in one of these they go on holiday i can't remember if it's this one or not but that one was also really wholesome i think it might be the volume before this one but yeah these make me happy the next question is your favorite book to movie adaptation you've seen this year so this is an interesting question because i had to scroll through all of the things i've seen in cinema this year and write down what I've actually because I, I I keep like a log of everything I see in cinema and I wasn't really thinking about things that I've watched at home I couldn't think of any films because I really don't watch films at home a lot um but a few things came to mind so on the list of things I've seen in cinema this year we have June part one which I felt like I had to count because it's my highest rated book to movie adaptation of the year um that I've seen in cinema but I, I re-watched that so it doesn't really feel like it counts I re-watched that in anticipation for June part two which I never went to see in cinema but I watched that 
and I rated it four stars. And I also watched Argyle. I don't think I can count that as an adaptation because the book came out at the same time as the film. But that's another one. And then I remembered that actually I've been re-watching The Summer I Turned Pretty and this is a comfort show for me. I absolutely love it and me and Courtney watched the first series while we were away and it just made us both sob so much. Honestly we were a wreck when we finished the first series because we were just both crying um, in bed we were just crying. It was a mess. But I love this show so much and I've been re-watching season two since we came back off holiday and I've been re-watching it this week while I've had Covid and I just find it so comforting to watch even though it's really sad in places. I love it and Courtney loved it too, it's her first time watching it so we watched the first series and yeah I'm so glad that she loved it so I feel like I have to give a shout out to this. It's an Amazon Prime show, series 3 is coming next year, I wish it was out now but it, alas it's not, I'll just have to keep re-watching series 1 and 2. Um, the other one I feel like I should give a mention to is I have just started watching A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by, so that's a BBC adaptation and I f I'm only a couple of episodes in but I feel like it's being done really well um, so I feel like I should give a shout out to that and I'm hoping to continue with that one maybe today, very shortly. So yeah, four different adaptations, possible adaptations, things I've rewatched and things I just wanted to mention. I'm doing really well with this uh, video I feel. The next question is the favourite, your favourite video that you've made or blog post that you've written this year. I haven't blogged in a very long time so I will have to mention a video here and I have to just say my holidays with Courtney, like all of them. <laughs> I love the videos I make for those. So the first one we did one in January and I loved it. We did our first winter reading retreat. We've been going on summer ones for the past four years, but this is the first year that we decided we needed a winter one too. And we will be doing that again in January. So I loved that video. I also made one when we went to Edinburgh last month and saw Taylor Swift. That was incredible and such an amazing experience. And I'm so glad that we got to do it. And I'm so glad I did it with Courtney. Um, there's a video for that, which I love. And also the one I've just posted, which is our annual summer reading retreat. Loved that. I also was really proud of the first video I made this year and I went to London with my friend Mitchell in January. I was really proud of that video too. Um, so I don't have a favourite but any I go on holiday or um, the like reading holidays with Courtney I really love making those videos and those are probably my favourites. I would like to go and re-watch the January one because it's been a while and I'm excited for next winter, this winter coming. I feel like we need to book that. The penultimate question, you'll be glad to know, is the most beautiful book that you've bought or received so far this year. And I have a set here in front of me to show you, which I did do an unboxing for, but it's the Bergman Brothers set by Chloe Lees. And this is an Afterlight set because that is absolutely stunning. <laughs> I'm not going to hold it for too long because I will drop them and it will be a mess. But I just think this is absolutely beautiful. I couldn't resist it. I haven't read these yet. So I really hope I like them because I feel like I've had like hit and miss with romance this year as I've spoken about in this video. But I couldn't pass up the opportunity to have that set on my shelf because it is stunning and those sprayed edges are beautiful. And last but not least, the final question is... A book you want to read before the end of the year. <laughs> Obviously there are so many books and my answer to this could just be like all of the things on my TBR. I always want to read all of the things and I don't have enough time to do that. But there is one that really specifically came to mind and that's Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, I really do want to read this series because I've had it for so long. It was on my self-destruct video that I did last year. Um, that I had like a year to read and then when that year came to an end I was in a really bad place so I never revisited that video. There is I think three that I didn't manage to get to. Two I am very happy to unhaul and I'm fine with not having reached them within the year but this one specifically I do want to read within... I do want to give this a go before unhauling it so I'm going to say it here as well. I want to read this before the end of the year. 
I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it all that much because I just have such hit and miss with Amy Kaufman's writing specifically. I've read the Illuminae files, I love Illuminae and I wasn't a big fan of Gemina and Obsidio. And then I also read the Shattered Stars, whatever that series was called, Starbound I think it's called, um, that she co-wrote with Megan Spooner, the Starbound trilogy. And I wasn't a big fan of that either. So I'm hesitant, but I just need to get this read. Like, this is one of those series that I just look at on my shelf and I'm just like, I've had you for so long, I really need to just get this done. So, yeah. That is specifically the one I want to read before the end of the year. And that is all the questions. I've talked a lot more than I intended to, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed answering these questions. And I will see you soon in another video. Bye.